Okay, so let's discuss. So this is uh, October number 22, paper 1-3. Uh, it was a really good paper. Let's attempt it. Good questions came in. So I've solved it. I'll share the PDF file with you as well. Before companies make planning decisions, they need to collect a lot of data. The decisions they make will depend on the quality of resulting information. I have highlighted uh, the important points. Apart from its age and its level, its level of detail, describe other factors which affect the quality of information. So obviously, uh, in this, um, I have I have also marked it so that you can know how we can get the marks. The relevance of the data needs to be related to this uh, situation. In other words, should be relevant to its purpose. Okay. Uh, so the data should be up to date. It should it shouldn't be exactly, old. Exactly, exactly up to date. Uh, this would also include that <laughs> too much information would require a lot of time searching. Right. Accuracy of the information is also very important for quality of information. This includes numerical and spelling mistakes as well. The structure of the questions can make the answers different. That's why questions need to have accuracy as well. Wrong data entered would result in inaccurate information. So I, I'm pretty sure this was quite doable. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right, good. A microprocessor controlled air conditioning system uses real-time processing. Explain what is meant by real-time processing in this scenario. Okay. So relating this scenario, we have to explain what is meant by real-time processing. So a real-time system needs to instantaneously, okay, um, right now, okay, it has to instantaneously process input and output data. That's why that was a very important point. It has to, has to be instant. In an air conditioning system, the user would need would sorry would input temperature in real. Okay, I mean it was real time rendering. The microprocessor, which is a dedicated microprocessor, would compare the actual value with the preset value, and that would be also. So what is a dedicated microprocessor? Um, a, a processor that does a particular job, just one job. Okay. okay. Right. Like one job at a time. Exactly. Okay. Moreover, the output through the actuator would happen in real time as per instructions of the dedicated microprocessor. Okay, usually real time involves small amount of data and not a lot of data. Obviously, real time is there just to uh, compare uh, the variables surrounding us, okay, and give the instructions to the microprocessor. Right. Backup software and antivirus softwares are both types of utilities that are often provided with operating systems without detailing the different methods of detection it's very important that's why i have highlighted these because uh, we we tend to emphasize on the points where the examiner said don't discuss it still i've seen students doing it we just need to describe the features of antivirus software so if we describe the feature of antivirus software, we will say is antivirus software would scan the system to find out any infected virus, with virus. Um, time can be set up to let it automatically scan. That's feature. It would quarantine the infected program in order to stop the spread. It's a feature. Antivirus softwares would report the results to the user, would also ask of if the files infected should be deleted or not. It's three marks, but that's an extra point. And that's a feature. Without referring to the different types of backup, describe the features of a backup software, same. So backup software's basic feature includes taking regular backups, point one. It would also provide with original copies of the file as per the date of backup, point number two. It would also ask the user to make a restore date time and how often backup should be made. So you see, this is the way I would like you to always attempt the theory papers. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Because while you're answering, this is something very important that I always tell my students is that while you're answering, check how many marks you're getting. Are you writing enough points? Because I've seen students that if a six marks question, they just write three points and they leave it. 
So are you not checking that how many points you've written till now? So it has, this has to go really fast. You write the thing in a consecutive sentence and you see that I have you mentioned that point. Then answer another point. Then another point. So and so. Sir, so our answer should be like, it should hit the point. Exactly. But ex there, there should be enough points as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Describe what is included in a management information system. So basically, the question where it says is that what is included? Now, this was not very properly done by candidates because what students did was they explained what an information system is. No, the question over here is not to explain you what a management information system is. The question over here is saying that you have to tell what is included in it. So if we talk about that, a management information system would typically include hardware, software, data, people, and procedures. Okay. Now let's explain it. Then, uh, I didn't understand this point. Includes uh, data, people, and procedures. I'm explaining. I'm explaining. Okay. Because a management information system, uh, the question, what does it include? It's a whole system that uh, when, uh, I think so. I did explain you uh, initially that a system includes hardware, software, procedures in my very important lecture. I have mentioned this expert system, whatever. I think so you can, you can recall it. So, Sir, but why does it, in, it it includes people? The user. If you remember one of my, okay. I said the user is part of the system. Yes or no? So people are okay, the. Okay, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So this is what it includes. But let's elaborate. It would include decision support system that would enable managers to gather information to support problem solving. Okay, right. Marketing information system would enable marketing aspects of the business. Account management system would allow accounts aspects of the system. Human resource management system would allow proper human resources to be managed properly. So you see your, your uh, full MIS, okay, will include the following things. You get the point, right? So, because it's management information system. How do you manage the everyday, the overall activities of a business using information systems. I hope it's clear. Okay. Yes, sir. So you you will uh, <clears throat> make sure you know all these points. Okay. A delivery company is using expert system to help reduce routes scheduled for its vehicles without describing its component. Again, I mean, I'm I'm trying to emphasize that let's not go to the wrong track. This is where. Uh, good students, where if they don't read the question properly, they go in the wrong track and they lose a lot of marks. They always think, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to get an A grade, but they end up with a B grade because they did not read the question. So <clears throat> explain how an expert system would produce this, these schedules. Okay, we have to explain how the expert system would do it. So if we talk about uh, the, the, the root schedules of, uh, of its vehicles, how would expert system help in that? Well, expert system would use the data about the number of vehicles and their types being used, obviously, in order to produce the schedules. Obviously, this is one thing. I mean, I'm sure lots of other points are coming in your mind. Uh, let's see. The amount of goods to be delivered matters a lot. So that would be also there. Uh, the number of drivers required, because we're just, we are talking about uh, how goods will be delivered. So we need to know that as well. The number of drivers required but available would need to be taken into account. Moreover, the delivery route has to be taken into account. We have to look at the time as well, the short, shortest time as well. <clears throat> so these and are so the time each uh, driver would be working. Exactly. Working hours. Absolutely. So the, my main emphasis is that we should be able to understand the question. You're getting my point. Why am I discussing this today? Yes, sir. Okay. Because um, having a knowledge of a topic is not everything. It's very important that we should know how to answer. Explain what is meant by backward chaining. Okay, we, we, do, we do know that backward chaining and forward chaining is a process through which information... From the final goal to the steps. Very good. Excellent. So backward chaining starts from the goal. That's why also known as goal driven. So backward chaining is also known as goal driven. And works backwards to determine 
what facts must be asserted so that the goal can be achieved. We also call it a top-down approach. Okay? And is used to automate inference engine. But that's important that you have to mention that. that the training is used to automate inference engine. You get the point. What do I mean by automate? Yes, sir. Automate means obviously it makes the inference engine work. Yes or no? Right? Yes, sir. The IT department manager in a company has decided new software is needed to run the payroll system. She will make a choice between using officer software and custom written software. She is already aware that there are differences in the level of support offered and the amount of testing that <clears throat> will have been carried out on the softwares. Discuss the other advantage disadvantages of choosing off the shelf software compared to custom softwares. A very um, a basic question. Let's see the way it should be answered. Off the shelf softwares would be readily available to the customers without uh, due delay as in custom softwares that would require less time to get developed. Okay. Right. So obviously because uh, of the cell softwares were, would be readily available as compared to custom, right? Uh, these would also be less expensive as compared to custom. Yes, they are. Custom softwares are more expensive. Of the cell softwares would also have less errors and bugs since these have been tested more thoroughly with more time spent. On the other hand, of the cell softwares would not fully, because we have, we're talking about over here is advantage disadvantages. Okay. So on the other hand, of the softwares would not would not fully fulfill the purpose for it has been developed for. Exactly. That's why we have to go for custom built softwares to fulfill our requirements. There would also be more chances of, of the software to be pirated. Okay. Because it's, it's readily available to everyone. Okay. There could also be not compatible with the company's commit system. Lastly, they would uh, not fully uh, fulfill all the requirements. I, I'm sorry, I forgot to write the entire point. But did you get this point, not compatible? Yeah, because if you make a custom build software, obviously you will know what your system is and it will build accordingly. But maybe if you go for an off the shelf software, maybe it, it's not compatible with your system. You get my point? Yes, sir. Describe the input processing and output in a microprocessor controlled burglar arm system. So the input in burglar arm system would be done with the help of uh, pressure pads, okay, because we have talked about input processing and output, okay? We need to talk about installed at different uh, specific locations. Position sensors would, would allow position and movements to be sensed. Infrared sensors can also be used here. The data from these sensor would be sent to the microprocessor, which would compare the actual value with the preset value. These signals would be sent to the respective actuator that would physically activate the system in case of having any event happening. So you get the point, how does it work? You could have mentioned over here that the actuator could be a buzzer, could be a light, okay? could be a, a message being sent because it actuates, it does something physically. So a teacher wishes to produce a computer program to output grades awarded to all of our students. If a student scores more than 60 marks, they are awarded A, 5th to 60, B, 40 to 49, C, below 40, D. The teacher has written the following algorithm before writing the program, unfortunately there are errors and some lines have been left out or omitted. She has however managed to include the correct. So if you go through it, you will somehow know is that in line number six uh, over here, okay, uh, it, it should have been over here, would be greater than equal to, okay? In line B should have been in quotes. So the, okay, this should have been greater than equal to, not less than. Okay, and or in line B, line eight, sorry, in line eight over here, uh, this should be in double quotes, print B. You see, this is correct, this is correct, but this is not right. Okay, 
there needs to be an input for the number of students in line a so obviously uh, we we are not inputting anything you can see over here well, obviously when you'll go through it you you'll get it in more sense because you not read the question number between 50 and 60 would uh, not have a grade so you can see over here is uh, if the mark is uh, less than 50 which is then this else if, if it's less than 40 so i mean we are not satisfying the statement we have missed out things okay if it's greater than a if it's uh, greater than uh 50 b uh, so uh we we don't have over here is between uh 50 and 60. only one student mark is allowed to be entered because the question over here says is i'll just show you uh <clears throat> we should produce computer program that uh, to output the grades awarded for all our students so over here is just one input mark for one so you have to go through this again and you will get it in a better way. There, there, there could be other mistakes as well. Um, if then indentation is also a problem. See, if then else, so this else has to come here. This else has to come here. The indentation is also not right. That's another thing you can mention. Are you with me, Vita? Yeah, yes, sir. Right. So hackers, Often use uh, this. You have to go through this again yourself, okay? And you'll get back to me, okay? You'll get a better idea. Hackers often use malware to attack yes, of large organizations. Analyze the consequences of this organization, okay? What what consequences will uh, this have if hackers attack? What what will happen? So the question emphasizes on the consequences. Okay, that's why I've, I've uh, actually highlighted this. Any sort of malware attack to the company network would disrupt the company's operation, one thing. Hackers would be in the position to delete the data, second point, steal it and redistribute it. The network could be a victim of DOS attack as well. In such a case, uh, the server would not be able to uh, get the clients properly. Ransomware would uh, uh, blackmail the company and take the data. Uh, as a result of all, the company could suffer financial loss. This could be consequences. There could be disruption in the overall business. This could be consequences. In case of rootkit being installed, it would damage the server's integrity to a lot of extent. Personal data of the employees could also be compromised. So you see, in fact, there were lots of points over here. We had to talk about different malwares. So when such a kind of question comes, Think of different malwares that can attack the network. And the question emphasizes that are these different malwares that we're referring to, how will they affect the companies? You get my point. Yes, sir. Describe listing groups affected. What is meant by groups affected? We have to talk about digital divide, but we have to talk about what are the different groups that are affected. So we have to talk about Groups means uh, people of different ages who are digitally divided. We have to talk about communities who are digitally divided. We have to talk about groups who have an access to the internet and who do not have. We have to talk about countries that have IC related equipment and those do not. So you, you get the point. I'm talking about groups. Groups who have access to e-commerce and those who do not. And people who are ICT educated and those who are not. So the question has been divided into different subgroups. And that's the way we're discussing it. So you see, this, this, this paper was really good because this paper mostly had uh, easy questions, but twisted way they were uh, asked by the students. Describe, okay, many companies store the personal data of their workers electronically. So what is meant by personal data? Obviously you know that. Personal data such as age, gender, religion, medical information, okay? Uh, this, is, this is basically your, your personal data. Describe the method that could be used to attempt to prevent unauthorized access to this personal data. So, I mean, obviously if you want to prevent unauthorized access to personal data, um, we could use is biometric verification, one, 
uh, we could use followers could be used to restrict unwanted list coming in. We could use passwords could be used as well. And since we're talking about uh, unauthorized access, we could use VPN. You know what a VPN is? No, sir. Okay, VPN basically is virtual private network. What actually happens in VPN is this person wants to communicate with this first person, but they want it to be very secure. So a private tunnel, okay, and this so like end to end inscription. So a tunneling process is made. We call this tunneling. So no one can actually see what's happening in this tunnel because this is basically a VPN tunnel. Okay, a VPN software uh, is used. So this end to this end, whatever communication takes place, no one will know what's going on. Obviously VPN slows down because the data is restricted to pass only through this tunnel. And obviously the bandwidth decreases, but this is a very secure way not to let anyone know what's happening. This is where we use the VPN software and VPN network. And why do we call it VPN network? Because obviously uh, what we're doing is we are talking about peer to peer. What matter what's meant by peer to peer? From one computer to person to another. Exactly. Get the point. That's what VPN is. Yes, sir. Right? And this was the entire paper of Tumor 22. Okay. So obviously afterwards, uh, uh, I will solve it with this with you um, afterwards, but I just wanted to have an idea because so that we are in, in a good position to, to know because uh,